Now, in Germany in recent years, reforms have been carried out throughout to give women a right to own property. I'm talking of this century. Till a few decades ago, even in Germany, women could not possess anything. It all belonged to husbands who possessed them. And they could not own any property. They themselves were like property. So this was the legacy of Christianity which you had inherited. And a rebellion against Christianity delivered you from this. While in Islam, as I said 1400 years ago, the teaching was revealed in the Holy Quran that women, women have every right to inherit their parents. They have every right to possess and no person is allowed to possess a woman. In marriage, they are free. It is their choice which is treated in preference to the choice of men. Men, if they want to divorce their women, have to go through a lengthy process of appearing before the court. Women have only one thing to say. Say, we do not like the face of this husband. And they will be liberated. What better concept of liberation you can possess? The allegation which is raised and often raised against Islamic teachings is that men are allowed to beat their wives. Now, fun, one thing is, one thing has to be brought to your notice that men do not require any religious license to beat their wives. Everywhere in the world, they beat their wives, even in Germany. And so cruelly, and so senselessly, that thousands upon thousands of women are killed at homes because their husbands beat them. And the defense of the husband is, they were drunk. They were what? Drunk. They were, drunk. Mm -hmm. they were not in their own senses. Whatever the defense, I'm talking of data which is published by researchers all over the world. Nobody can reject this data because it was carried, the research was carried out by independent Christian sources. They say that in these so-called advanced countries, women suffer so much at the hands of cruel husbands that uh, is difficult to keep count. In England once I heard a program on television in which the police officer who was in charge for investigation, he said that it is impossible for us to reach all cases because out of the fear for their husbands, a very large number of women hide the cruelty which is committed against them. Now this is the situation which prevails in modern times while allegations are made against the Holy Prophet 1400 years ago, who, who happened to be 1400 years ago, that it was his teaching which gave, which gave license to women, which gave license to men to beat their wives. Now that teaching is definitely misunderstood because the only person who could understand the Islamic teaching better than anyone else was the Holy Prophet himself. And all through his life, despite the repeated offense by some women against him, some of his wives, he never raised even his little finger against any of his wives. Not once. Did he not understand the Islamic teaching? Who did if he did not? So you should understand Islam 
from the conduct of the founder of Islam, not from the conduct of the medieval mullahs of today, whose treatment of women may be cruel, but the treatment of women in free countries may be even more cruel. Because it is done in, not in the name of any religion, so it passes. But you should understand it is a, a tendency in men to enjoy women while they are lovely and beautiful and to destroy them if they are not so. They are forced to serve in the house like maids. I'm not talking of what you see on television. The treatment of women on television is beautiful. I'm talking of realities of life. There, a very different story can be told of what is happening in actual life. Look at your lower tier of people who serve as laborers and see what is happening in their homes. So just to condemn Islam for an imaginary crime is not honest. If you can find fault with the conduct of the holy founder of Islam, then let me know. Otherwise you have no right to censure Islam for something which, need, which Islam never taught. Now I told you that this, <coughs> the answer to this question requires a very elaborate discussion. But the time is too short to finish this discussion because it would require, if I do elabor elaborate, so many hours, maybe twenty hours or so, because I'll have to compare all priest religions with Islam and their religious teachings, which in fact enslaved women to a degree or which was understood to enslave women by the people who followed. So, for example, if I start discussing Hinduism, how it treated women before Islam, and still does, it will be amazing how many hundreds of thousands of women were burnt alive because their husbands had passed away without any crime. This was a religious teaching because if there were there two options. In their religion they should have lived like people who say, touch me not. A life of total seclusion from the society with no rights whatsoever or to accept death by burning. The life they confronted without their husband was so horrible, according to the Hindu teaching, that hundreds of thousands of women preferred being burnt alive to that life. And it is still, still going on in India. Every year, some say hundreds of thousands, some say maybe a, a hundred thousand or so. Women are nowadays burnt alive in India because of the influence of Hindu teaching. So that is why I said I cannot elaborate this question further. I only referred briefly to Christianity and history because you understand the comparison better.